Chris here and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my book haul for April, May, and June. So this is long overdue to be filmed. I have, I think, just under 50 books, maybe. I haven't counted, but I wanted to let you know what I have hauled. And yeah, we're just going to dive in because there's a giant stack over here. So first up, I'm going to run you quickly through my ebooks and my audiobooks. First, I got The Secret Book and Scone Society by Ellery Adams. I got the ebook of this. This is the first book in a cozy mystery series. I think this was a Barnes and Noble freebie for a month, and I liked Ellery Adams' other series and decided I would absolutely be down to give this one a try. Then I got the audiobook of Spare by Prince Harry so that I could listen along while I read. absolutely loved this audiobook. He narrates it himself absolutely 100% recommend. It was amazing and brilliant. And I'm so glad that I got the audiobook because I thought it was really informative hearing Prince Harry's story told in his own voice. Then I got The Ogress and the Orphans by Kelly Barnhill, and this was another audiobook I grabbed. This is a standalone that follows an ogress who is living in this town, and she is accused of some crimes and the orphans kind of come to her rescue. I really enjoyed this one as well and thought that the audiobook was superb. Then I managed to get the audiobook and the ebook for Dial P for Poison by Sarah Keen. I believe one of them was a free audiobook from Barnes and Noble and the other was a free ebook from Kindle or swap that. But somehow I ended up with both of them or it was like 99 cents or something like that. So I ended up with both because I like being able to listen along while I read. And if it's pretty cheap, I don't mind grabbing it. I believe this is another cozy mystery and I think it might have some maybe magical elements. So I'm looking forward to checking that series out. Then I got the Little Venice Bookshop. I think this is a cozy mystery, though it could also be a romance based on like the cover and the title. I'm not quite sure off the top of my head. I hate not having the physical book to be able to tell you what it's about, but... This was, again, another freebie from Barnes & Noble, I believe. So I'm always down to check out free books if they sound interesting. Then I got Tell Me How It Ends by Quentin Lee. This I know is queer, and I believe it's a romance, and I think it has witchy vibes. I remember something about tarot cards in the description. And I'm excited to have another queer book on my TBR. I can never get enough of those. And maybe it'll be perfect for a prompt for the next round of the Queer Lit Readathon because... I really enjoyed taking part in that and being able to read a bunch of queer books. So we'll see. Then I got the audiobook for Ruin by John Gwynn. This is the third book in the Faithful and the Fallen series. I purchased all of the audiobooks because I believe they're Audible exclusive, so I can't get them out of the library. And I do so much better when listening along while I'm reading an audiobook. So it was kind of a no-brainer to grab that one. I also snagged via audiobook In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. I didn't actually need the audiobook. I could have just physically read along, but I was in a headspace at the time where I really just wanted audiobooks to help me focus. And I knew that the House in the Cerulean Sea and Under the Whispering Doors audiobooks were amazing. So I'm so glad that I grabbed this one. I think it is a brilliant audiobook. There is some amazing voice work in this as it follows a young man who lives in a treehouse and he's kind of offset from society. I think there's kind of a um, disconnect in the society. So he hasn't grown up with like other humans. And two of his faithful companions are actually robots. And it is very, very interesting because the robots have some interesting voices and personalities that the voice actor does a great job bringing to life. So I'm really glad I grabbed that one. And that's it for my audiobooks and ebooks. A lot that I don't know about, but again, I'm usually grabbing cozy mysteries with my audiobooks and ebooks if I find them free. So that's probably going to be a majority of what they are, but I do have some outliers in there. So very excited to get to all of those and really enjoyed the ones I have gotten to. Now on to this giant stack of physical books. Let's start with A Thief in Thunder Clan. This is a graphic novel in the Warrior series. If you're new to my channel, Warriors is a series that follows forest cats that live in clans and have to try to coexist. I absolutely love this series. I'm slowly working my way through getting them all. And I've been trying to continue to grab the new ones as they come out so I don't fall behind again. And this book came out during the three month period of this haul. So I obviously got myself a copy. Then in some buy one, get one free sale. So I don't remember what else I got with this. 
Um, I got the Trials of Apollo, the Tyrant's Tomb, and then the House of Hades and the Blood of Olympus, which are both in the Heroes of Olympus series. So I believe the only book I don't own in the Percy Jackson, like, main arcs is the Tower of Nero. So I've got the rest of them, but that's why I snagged these was because I did not have these in my collection and I was doing a reread this year. So when I saw they were buy one, get one 50% off, I decided to work to fill in my collection. Next, I'll talk about The Wake Up Call by Beth O'Leary. I actually won this in a Goodreads giveaway. And it says two hotel receptionists and arch rivals find a collection of old wedding rings and compete to return them to their owners, discovering their own love story along the way. I've read some of uh, Beth O'Leary's other books and really enjoyed them. So it was a no brainer to enter the giveaway and try to snag a copy of this. And I'm hoping I enjoy it whenever I'm in the mood for romance. Then I got Girls Who Code, The Friendship Code. This is the first book in the series and it follows a group of young teens or like preteens, actually preteens, who join the coding club in their school. And the first book follows Lucy, who is very, very excited to join the coding club because she wants to learn how to code so that she can make an app to help her uncle. And I really enjoyed this book and I'm quite curious to see where the series goes. I believe I own books two and four as well, or three and four. So I will definitely be continuing on with the series, but it was a no brainer when I had the ability to grab book one to snag it because I knew it was one I wanted to read. Then I got The Battle for Roar by Jenny McLaughlin. This is the third and final book in the Roar trilogy. And this follows two kids named Arthur and Rose who end up traveling to the land of make-believe. It was a land they created when they were kids and they thought it was fake, but the evil entity in that land ends up kidnapping their grandfather, so they end up having to go after them. And this is the conclusion to that trilogy. I absolutely love this trilogy. It was amazing and brilliant, and I would highly recommend you check it out if you haven't already, because who wouldn't have been jazzed if their make-believe land when they were kids came to life and you could actually go visit it and play with your imaginary friends you made there and stuff. So just a brilliant, brilliant middle grade series. And I was so excited to be able to pick up the final book and finally finish the story. Next up, I got Festergrim. This is the fourth book in the Eerie on Sea series. And this follows a boy named Herbert Levin who works in a lost and found of a hotel. And there's kind of spooky things that go on in this town and he ends up going on adventures to try to investigate these spooky things with his friend named Violet. I absolutely love this series. They are the perfect amount of spooky for me because I'm a giant chicken and it was absolutely no brainer to grab book four and continue the series. I'm so excited to read book five whenever that actually comes out in the States because I believe it is out in the UK, but I don't know that it's come out here yet. But whenever it does, I will grab it and you will probably see that in a future haul. Next is probably my most anticipated book of this haul, and I haven't gotten to it yet for good reason, but it is The Sun and the Star by Rick Riordan and Mark Oshiro. This is the first book in the new arc in the Percy Jackson universe, and I want to read this so badly. I was doing a Percy Jackson read-along on my Discord, though, so I was trying to get through the entire backlog of all the Percy Jackson universe books before I read the two new ones, so this has been sitting on my shelf since May when it came out and I'm so excited to be getting to it. It follows some characters we've met in previous books and I just absolutely love this universe and can't wait to see what happens in the next one and where things go. Then I got The Golden Swift by Lev Grossman. This is the second book in the Silver Arrow series and it follows Kate who in the first book gets a train that ends up being able to be moved like it is the like engine of the train, the front of the train. And she ends up going on adventures to kind of help save the environment and save animals that are being displaced because of us humans and the way we are kind of trashing the planet. I really enjoyed the first one. And when I realized there was a sequel, I knew I had to have it. I've read this one. I really enjoyed it. So I'm really glad that I got it. And I now have a copy for my shelves. Then I grabbed Johnny Tremaine. So I remember reading this book when I was in school. I don't remember whether it was like sixth grade maybe sixth grade. It was like fifth, sixth or seventh, somewhere in there. And I don't remember much about it, but there is one scene and I'm not going to mention what it is because I feel like it would be a spoiler, but there is one very specific scene that sticks out in my head to this day. And so when I saw a copy of this in a little free library, I decided I wanted to grab it because I wanted to see the context of that scene again, because I remember 
a specific instance of a scene, but not like the whole how it came about and Johnny's story in general and see if it holds up because I remember enjoying this, even though I don't remember really what happens outside of that one scene. So um, Johnny is a blacksmith apprentice in 1773 in Boston. So it might have been fifth grade because I remember we did an, an, a whole unit on American history and like the Revolutionary War. So maybe fifth grade. But anyways, uh, I'm very excited to have a copy of this and to give it a reread and see if I enjoy it as an adult. Then I grabbed Alex Trebek, The Answer Is, Reflections on My Life. So this is obviously his memoir or autobiography. I have a lot of fond memories of watching Jeopardy with Alex and the show just is not the same without him. And I saw this in a little free library and it seemed like a no brainer because I really do love like memoirs and autobiographies. And this is somebody I grew up with. So I'm curious to see what he shares in his story and what parts of his life he chose to share with us. Next, I got The Gathering Storm by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson. This is book 12 in, yes, book 12 in the Wheel of Time series. I'm taking part in Wheel of Time along. So when I saw that the Little Free Library had a copy, I decided to snag one just so I wouldn't have to worry about getting it out of my library when the time came to read it. Then I won another Goodreads giveaway and I got a Beanie Song by P. Dejley Clark. It says, in darkness, a song can lead the way. Beware which one you listen to. It's a enchanting beginning of an epic West African and African diaspora inspired fantasy adventure for middle grade readers. I don't really know much else about it, but I'm excited to check it out and see what it's all about. Next, I got Beyond the Bright Sea by Lauren Wolk. This is a contemporary, I believe, and I read Echo Mountain by Lauren Wolk and really enjoyed it. This one's going to follow Crow, who has lived her entire life on a tiny isolated piece of the starkly beautiful Elizabeth Islands in Massachusetts. She was abandoned in a small boat when she was just hours old. She's always been curious about the world around her. On the night of mysterious fire appears across the water, the unspoken question of her own history forms in her heart, and a unstoppable chain of events is triggered, leading Crow down a path of discovery and danger. I'm hoping that I enjoy it as much as I did Echo Mountain because I thought that was really interesting and I'm curious to see what Crow's story is. So very excited to get into this one and I also think this has a very pretty cover so that could work. It also works for water on the cover. Never can have enough of those. Next I got 28 Summers by Ellen Hildebrand. I know nothing about this. I have finally read one of her books. I keep finding them in Little Free Libraries. And I've been grabbing them and I really enjoyed the book that I did read. So I'm excited to have another one to read whenever I decide to check her out again. I believe historical fiction, maybe? No, it's actually set in 2020. Interesting. So I don't know anything else about this, um, but I will be interested in seeing how this plays out and if I enjoy the writing in this one as much as I did the historical fiction of hers I read. Then I got A Bird Will Soar, and in this one we're following Axel, who loves birds, especially eagles. No one worries, an eagle will fly too far and not come home, a fact Axel wishes his mother understood. Axel knows his mother is like an osprey, the best of all bird mothers, but it's hard to remember that when she worries and keeps secrets. His dad is more like a wild turkey coming and going as he pleases. His dad's latest disappearance is the biggest mystery of all. And it sounds like a tornado is going to hit his home and his dad will come back to repair it and then he's got to manage things with his parents and try to take care of his family. It sounds like it's going to be an interesting middle grade contemporary and I'm looking forward to checking it out and also really good for nature on the cover. Then I got Charlie Bone and the Hidden King. This is the fifth book in the series. This is another series where I found several in the little free libraries and I decided to grab this one. So at some point if I decide to read it and enjoy it I can have uh several of the books. I think I have like two three four and five now or something like that. So looking forward to checking this out at some point. Then I snagged an elephant in my kitchen and this is a nonfiction that deals with elephants. I know it is the second in a series, although I'm assuming they're companion novels, but I'm not 100% positive, so I don't want to read the back in case it's like a continuation of a nonfiction story. But nonfictions about elephants sounded interesting and kind of different from some of the other nonfictions I've read. So I believe this is another little free library find, and I'm curious to see what we learn about elephants in this one. 
Then I got Spells for Lost Things by Jenna Evans Welch. And I think this is a witchy romance. Yeah, it mentions uh, her mysterious aunt who may or may not be a witch and the century's old curse on her family. So, and a heartwarming romance. So yeah, a witchy romance. I don't know much more about it, but I was really drawn to the cover and I'm excited to give it a go and see if it's something I'm interested in. Then I grabbed uh, Lewis Hayden and the War Against Slavery. This is, I'm going to assume about Lewis Hayden, and it is a nonfiction that I found in a little free library. I don't know if it's any good, but I'm willing to check it out. He was a slave in Kentucky and escaped to freedom with his wife and son in 1844 to become a leader in the cause to end slavery in the United States. So... Curious to learn more about him. I've never heard of him, so it should be an interesting read. Then I got Baseball Genius and Double Play. These are the first two books in the Baseball Genius series. I am assuming they're going to have to do with baseball, and I got them because they're written by Derek Jeter, who is one of my all-time favorite baseball players. That That's the whole story. So baseball books, it could be good for prompts for sports in a book. I, again, don't know much more about them, but I figure if Derek Jeter is one of the writers on the book, then the baseball stuff should probably be pretty accurate. I think he knows a thing or two. Then in another sports theme, I got The Crossover and Rebound by Kwame Alexander. I got these the same day as I got the Derek Jeter books, and I got them all out of the same little free library. I'm assuming these have something to do with basketball. Ah, basketball and rap. So... Says, in this heartfelt novel, basketball and brotherhood intertwine to show Josh and Jordan that life doesn't come with a playbook and sometimes it's not about winning. But it does say up here that, like, it gives a, a thing where it says, raps, basketball phenomenon. So, obviously, he likes to rap as well. I've read other books by Kwame Alexander before, I believe, and so his name is what drew me to these, and I'm curious to check them out, especially considering... I do have a few little ones in my life that are into sports, so these could be good choices for them down the line. And I like being able to give them books I've read and think were really good. Then I got Sanity and Tallulah Shortcuts by Molly Brooks. This is the third book in a graphic novel series, so I don't really know anything about it and I can't exactly tell you anything about it, but I thought the cover was cute and I'm always down to find more middle grades. This was another little free library haul, so... I'm excited to check this series out at some point. Then I got Art Attacks Doodleville. This is the second book in the Doodleville duology. I really, really enjoyed this book. I enjoyed the first one. I can see it being a series I reread at some point. And it follows Drew, who is really into drawings. And the interesting thing is her doodles come to life. And things don't always go smoothly when they do. I really enjoyed both of these books when I had the opportunity to get the second book from my shelves I did. Next, I got Someday Maybe... And I'm just going to pop that there so you can see who it's by because there's absolutely no way I'm going to pronounce that without butchering it. So I'm not even going to try. <laughs> um, I don't know much about this. It says, here are three things you should know about my husband. One, he was the great love of my life despite his penchant for going incommunicado. Two, he was, as far as I and everyone else could tell, perfectly happy, which is significant because three, on New Year's Eve, he killed himself. And here's one thing you should know about me. One, I found him. Bonus fact, no, I'm not okay. So this sounds like it's going to be an extremely hard-hitting, probably contemporary, and I'm curious to see how our main character deals with the loss of her husband, finding her husband, and dealing with the grief, and probably trauma that comes along with that. Then I got All Adults Here by Emma Straub. This says coming of age isn't just for kids and we're going to be following Astrid who's a mother to three grown-up children and has been keeping a secret and just as she is finally warming up to share her secret with the family a forgotten memory from her younger parenting days is jostled loose and it's not a good one the secrets are multiplying it seems and so are her mistakes suddenly she realizes she may not have been quite the parent she always thought she was but to what consequences and is it too late to set things right so there's obviously more to this description, but it sounds like it's going to be a family book where we kind of focus on family aspects and some of the drama that goes along with that. 
it sounded interesting when I read the description. Again, another little free library find, and I'm excited to see if it's any good. Next, Shadow. This is the third book in the latest arc in the Warrior series. Like I said earlier, with A Thief and Thunder Clan, I'm trying to keep up on the new book. So this is the latest book in the third arc. So it was a no-brainer that I was going to grab it. Then I got Everyone Knows Your Mother is a Witch. And this is going to be set in a German duchy in 1618. And our main character is going to be accused of being a witch and have to deal with that and... The potential follow from that because there was a lot of paranoia in 1618 so i don't know much more about that i can tell you because it is on that beast over there it is the lowest rated book on my tbr so i don't have a lot of high hopes for it but when i read the description it sounded interesting it's a little free library haul so if i don't like it eh, not the biggest loss in the world we're getting there we're almost done next i found the witch and the czar and this is a debut novel where we have the malign and immortal witch of legend known as Baba Yaga will risk all to save her country and her people from Tsar Ivan the Terrible and the dangerous gods who seek to drive the twisted hearts of men. Yes, I know why I picked this up, Baba Yaga. I've read a lot of books about her. I think this would be my first non-middle grade. So I'm curious how uh, Baba Yaga's story is told in this one and what happens. It is quite bigger than, like I said, the other books I've read about Baba Yaga, but I'm curious and... We'll see how it goes when I get to it. Next is another book I won in a Goodreads giveaway, and that's The Firefly Summer. And we're following a group of kids who I'm assuming are going to summer camp. Because this is a summer cover, so I have to go into it blind. So I can't read you the description, but I'm going to assume, based on the fact that we have a group of kids, it's called Firefly Summer, and it certainly looks like m maybe camp. Oh, yes, camp right there. That flag right there says camp. So yes, camp, summer camp for kids. Don't know anything about it. Can't know anything else about it until I read it, which I haven't done yet. So there's that. I will uh, link my summer covers up in the cards if you want to check out my thoughts on that and the other books I picked. Then I got Come All You Brave Soldiers Blacks in the Revolutionary War. This is another nonfiction I found in a little free library that I'm going to assume is going to cover... Uh, black soldiers in the Revolutionary War. I am always down to learn more about our history and more about the true history of our country and not the sanitized version they want to teach you in schools, though I feel like I have learned a lot more about history than kids these days are because, again, we have to teach both sides of the story, but that is not what this video is about. Anyways, I'm down to read another nonfiction and see what I learn in this one. And then last, but certainly not least, Scanner and the Phantom Rider by A.F. Steadman. I am so excited for this. I think out of all the books I mentioned today, the only one I'm more excited to read is The Sun and the Star. This is the second book in the Scanner series. It's got a beautiful naked hardback. I absolutely loved the first book, and I'm so excited to dive back into Scanner's story and see what he gets up to next. It has been so tempting to put it on many a TBR, but I have not gotten there yet. So hopefully I will get to read it soon because like I said, it is one of the most anticipated books I've read. Although as I'm doing this, I can see the foiling. Could be good for foil on the cover if that prompt comes up anywhere. So I'll have to keep that in mind. So there you have it. That is my book haul. It's a lot smaller, I think, than the last few I've done which is not a bad thing because I'm trying to get through some of the books on my TBR and not bring quite as many in, mainly because I am running out of shelf space. So I'm hoping that by not bringing as many in and trying to focus on some of my own TBR this year, I will be able to maybe free up an extra bookcase for books I wanted to keep, but we shall see. This certainly will help, like I said, having less books in a haul. So there you have it. That is my entire haul. Let me know in the comments below which of these books you think I should prioritize. Let me know if you see one where you're like, Chris, there is no way you're going to enjoy that. You should just stop while you're ahead and unhaul it because that is also good information for me. With that said, I'm going to wrap the video up here. All of my social media is linked in the description below if you'd like to come chat with me. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me a book stack emoji since I've just added quite the book stack to my house. Like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!